Continuous remembrance of the Lord takes place in my mind. According to Ramanuja, constant and continuous remembrance is as good as actually visually seeing the Lord. Otherwise, we see many times we meet, afterwards we forget. How to do this practice of Artha Bhavanam or remembrance, that is the main crux of the problem. You will find most of us are failing there. The next sutra says, how do you practice remembrance? Like how do you practice meditation? Sadhudhirgakala, long time. So depressing, is it not? You thought it's like one year software diploma or accountancy course. Go, within one year we finish it and then now we have a diploma in accountancy or some sort of computer engineering, this one. And it's all over. That's where we have mistaken about the mind. The mind is a 24 hours active agent. Even when we go to sleep, it is not sleeping. It dreams. And even in the deep sleep, when mind is supposed to be so quiet, like the CPU, even when the monitor is off, the power is inside. And the human mind is such a computer, even in the dream, heartbeat, blood circulation and all other things are kept running. How it happens is through the subliminal parts of the mind continuously working. We are not aware of it. And sometimes suddenly in the deep sleep a dream comes. Is it not? And we wake up. In CPU, somebody has to switch on the UPS and then switch on the CPU and all those things are there. But in the mind, without your knowledge, without your permission, without your sanction, mind says, come on. And that dream penetrating through the layers of deep sleep awakens the mind and from deep sleep to dream and again you come back to the waking state oh it's only 2 o'clock and once you get up at 2 o'clock it's difficult to go back to sleep again and we are all telling we have got control of the mind so dhirga kamala long time simply long time doesn't work when I was in Kuala Lumpur, one lady told Swami, I am a very, very regular devotee of Ramakrishna Mat. What, what is the meaning of No, regularly I come. Last two years I have not seen your face at all. I am here for the last two years. Three years before I used to come. So the words and the ideas we used to exchange and communicate are so empty, meaningless. Three years means there is a gap of three years. So how it becomes regular when we say three years before I am coming? So mentally we concoct so many things and we think regularly I am meditating. How? Three times a year I went for Shardar Devi Jayanti, Sri Ramakrishna Jayanti, Vivekananda Jayanti. During Aarati I sat for meditation. Maybe for two minutes. And he is under the impression I am regularly meditating. It's actually a false impression. So Patanjali says, Dhirga Kala Nairantarya. Nairantarya means what? Nirantara means? Huh? Ah, continuous is a wrong word. We are telling continuous. I did it on Monday, I continue it on Friday. Again, next Friday I continue. Then again I drop it, I continue. It is constant and continuous. Nairantarya, it must be non-stop. Are you getting depressed by the terms and the conditions Patanjali is laying down for practice? Satadhirga Kala, long time, Nairantarya, Nirantara. And that also, how you do that? Satkara Sevita with great liking. Sometimes we do mechanically, oh, we have to do it, we have to sit, if we don't do it, then we are doing something wrong, not something missing. Oh, then we may miss something, achievement of meditation. So all this 
क्लाउसी एंड फ्लिंसी थॉट्स कमी इन द माइंड ही सेज दीर्घ काल नहीं रंतरे सत्कारा से भी तो विद ग्रेट लाइकिंग या हर्ड ऑफ मोहम्मद रफी ही वाज ग्रेट सिंगर हाउ ही यूज्ड टू प्रैक्टिस आई रेड दैट रेगुलरली ही विल प्रैक्टिस एम एस लक्ष्मी इट्स कॉल्ड रियाज इन हिंदी इट्स कॉल्ड रियाज डेली प्रैक्टिस Mukesh or Muhammad Rafi, he in the winter also used to enter into the river, either a pond or a river, which is very cold. Dip his hands there, and with those hands which are shivering and almost frozen, he will start playing the harmonium. Now we are appreciating those people, but how much of practice they have done? There is a Tamil saying, "Sadhana indi sadhita yaro me layu pula gil." साधन बिना सिद्ध पुरुष कोई नहीं हुआ इस जग में सो ये सिद्ध मस्ट हैव साधना साधना शुड बी फॉर लॉन्ग टाइम अनब्रोकन कंटिन्यूटी एंड दैट इज टू डन विद ग्रेट लाइकिंग एंड डिवोशन यू ऑल हैव ग्रेट लाइकिंग फॉर स्लीप इज इट नॉट यू मींस आई एम इंक्लूडिंग माय सेल्फ आल्सो डोंट यू हैव ग्रेट लाइकिंग फॉर स्लीप how we prepare the bedroom the bed and suppose we don't get sleep we go to the doctor and take the tablets in the train in the bus how people are sleeping they are dashing against the handles of the bus seat they are hitting the head sometime between the passenger and the seat they are falling down and the passenger other passenger moves forward so we fall between him and the seat and then slowly gives a pressure push and then we wake up the sleep is so intoxicating sometimes in the train i have found passengers holding on to the rails and standing and sleeping also is it not so much we love sleep moment we are free sit in the bus in the car going on dozing so much we like this spell of sleep intoxicating is it not that is called satkara se we have a great liking nobody is rejecting sleep this is how we have to practice dirga kala nairantare satkara se we to the net result is drida bhumi ni like trees spreading their roots deep into the earth and they stand they stand very firm so firm that heavy winds cannot shake the tree this is our abhyasa has to be done long term unbroken with great devotion and liking so that meditation has taken strong roots inside our heart how will you understand meditation has taken who any initiated devotees are here anybody practicing regular meditation practicing but results not teaching oh you know doing result is result is poor so how do we assess self assessment that meditation has taken a roots in our mind we teacher has not lifted the hand very sure how do we assess that meditation is taking deep roots in our mind Oh, that is okay. We will forget our body. Hmm? It is always the subconscious. To some extent, we are coming near. Huh? You are initiated by whom? No, very good. Nice. What is your age? I am twenty-eight. Huh? Twenty-eight. Wow! It's an achievement if you really feel like that. we had one swami ji his name was gopesh maharaj he was in vrindavan he was a disciple of holy mother sharada devi i do not know whether any time i have mentioned that this incident i have met him he was 80 at that time one of his attendants sevak swami ji told me and gopesh maharaj was a disciple of holy mother sharada devi he was very intense in japan meditation Daily night, one o'clock he will get up. See, one o'clock getting up, giving up the sleep, 
which is so alluring and intoxicating. You will get up, sit cross leg, take up the japa mala and start doing nama japa and then go into meditation. The attendant Swami once told me that sometimes when the devotees will be more or some festivals are there in the ashrama, he used to feel tired and naturally the bodily fatigue will make him sleep. He may sleep, but exactly, and Seva cannot sleep because he has to attend on him. If he sleeps, then it's gone. Seva will be attending, and he has told me that exactly at 1 o'clock, just 2 5 minutes before he was snoring, but when the time for Japa came, even when he was asleep, first the legs will get crossed like this on the bed itself. And the hand will go stealthily like that to take up the Japa Mala. By the time he lifts the box of the Japa Mala, he will wake up. Oh, one five. Start doing the Japa. This is called Drida Bhomihi. It has taken such a firm root that even if you forget, your nervous system will not allow you to forget it. According to Vivekananda, this is called education. We are so much boasting about our education, is it not? So how education and the mind control is so inseparably connected? One of the definitions of education, according to Vivekananda, is... Let's say, Give a chair. You can give one chair. We'll come back. Huh? She can go this way also, no problem. But kindly provide a chair because she is older than some of the ladies sitting there. One definition of education given by Swamiji is education is a nervous association of ideas. How beautiful is it not? Education is a nervous association of ideas. From where he picked up the ideas on education? From the life of Sri Ramakrishna who was not at all educated. These are also baffling. His master was uneducated and the profound theories on education which Vivekananda lays in front of us, he has picked it up from Sri Ramakrishna's life. How we can prove that education is a nervous association of ideas? Education means in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, the same thing must come and reflect. If you talk one thing, do something and uh, think other thing, then we are specialized politician. You cannot become a sadhaka. For a politician, you should be very careful not to do the thing he th thinks and he should not speak the uh, thought in his mind. Nobody should know what is happening in his mind. That's a deft politician. If people come to know what is in your mind, how can you do politics? Is it not? Vivekananda checked Sri Ramakrishna regarding his Kanchanatyala by keeping one rupee coin below the blanket. Unaware of that, when Sri Ramakrishna sat on the bed, he jumped up as if a scorpion has stung. So, even when he is not aware and when a metal, a coin is touching Sri Ramakrishna's body, the whole nerves are reacting. Suppose if our politicians get educated, in not taking bribe, in not getting corrupted, moment they will receive a bundle of notes, the whole fingers will bend. In the case of Sri Ramakrishna, the idea of renunciation of Kanchana, the Kanchana Tyaga was so deep that if it touches any metal, the whole nervous system will react and he cannot touch it. Even if he doesn't know it, unaware if he, his body touches, the whole nervous system will react and make him renounce and give up the medal. Not only in this case of Kanchanatheya, he was a great uh, admirer and uh, man who held on to truth. Even by mistake, he cannot tell a lie. Quite contrary to our nature. Once he had given a word to one of the devotee that he will come and meet him on that day. But by mistake or because of too many devotees coming and meeting him, he missed that, he forgot, but by the time the evening approached, he felt a sort of discomfort in the body, a sense of uneasiness took over him. Suddenly he felt, why am I feeling so uneasy? 
I am feeling so uncomfortable. And within few minutes, he understood that he had given word to somebody that he will come and meet. He had forgotten. In our case, what will happen? All of you know, is it not? We are given a promise, but we couldn't fulfill. Whatever may be the reason, we turn all the situation to our advantage. We tell them, yes, we had given a word, we will come and meet. But, the but comes there. And in case of Sri Ramakrishna, that's how these characteristics separate the genius, the avatara from ordinary folks. Sri Ramakrishna remembered that he was to meet one person and he had forgotten it. And it was almost evening. Then he remembered that the day comes to a close only by 12 o'clock. Today will come to a close only by 12 p.m. is it not? Or 11.59. In that dark evening as shadows were lengthening, he took a lantern in his hand and ran. Looks like a madcap, is it not? All great men are like madcaps. Other people, they were feeling, why he has given up? Okay, he has forgotten, so what? The world is not going to come to an end today night. Why is running? But in the case of Sri Ramakrishna, the value of values was his life. What is the value of values? The whole life must be sacrificed for upholding truth. So he ran, it was almost 6 30 or 7 o'clock. And in those days, and even now also, some of us take food by 7 o'clock and by 7 38 we go to sleep. The villages it still continues. So when he went, he found the door was gate was closed and there was a small gate in the big door, wicket gate. He opened it, called him three times, and the man didn't come out. Because all of them had withdrawn, retired inside. Sri Ramakrishna put one of his legs inside the compound, touched the soil, the earth of the compound, again called him three times and then repeated, Hello, you see, today is not over yet, it's not 12 o'clock and before the day has been closed, I have maintained my word. I called you three times, you are not coming. I got delayed, but I have not denied the truth. I have kept my word. And the moment Sri Ramakrishna touched the compound, the earth of the, that particular person's house, all the uneasiness disappeared. And Sri Ramakrishna remarked, had I not done that, I would have become a liar. So the nerves are reacting, reminding him that you are straying away from the path of truthfulness. So Vivekananda says, that is education. Not a big amount of talking or writing hundreds of books or lecturing. The whole nerves must react. So education means whatever ideas, values, morals which we have learned, it must get associated with our nerves. Then only it becomes education. Otherwise, it remains mere information without causing transformation. Information is not of much use. The real use is when it causes transformation, it becomes education. So in the life of a sadhaka, when he wants to meditate, the nerves must react. If you have really meditated, then you will understand. Without having a watch, you can predict the time. At least half an hour near. I'll tell one more story. All these stories are from the lives of our own great monks of the Ramakrishna order. The last century it was Ramakrishna order which revived this great interest in meditation. It was Swami Vivekananda standing on the western soil propagated these ideas of meditation. And after him only we see the great awakening of interest in yoga, meditation, kundalini, supra mind, ultra mind and all those things are coming, making plenty of money. But he was the first man to take spirituality for the benefit of common man in day to day life and spread it in the West. His Raj Yoga, the masterpiece 
and his own boss sitting in meditation entering into samadhi while giving a talk on meditation. I am not entering into a meditative state. In London when Vivekananda was talking on Raja Yoga and on samadhi, suddenly went into meditation. The eyeballs came protruding out and from the seats people got up to see what is happening. Something fantastic, amazing is happening. Here is a man going into samadhi. We are talking about meditation and they were so stuck down with Vivekananda. That's the pose. That's not taken in his studio or when he was really meditating. He was explaining Raja Yoga at the time when he was talking about samadhi, the mind going into higher states of consciousness. He went into that state. That means how much practice he must have done. Is it not? So practice is like that. In our own order, we had one Swami in Vireshwarananda Ji Maharaj. He was also a disciple of Sharada Devi. Some of you may be initiated by Vireshwaranji, I do not know. I was initiated by him. He was Holy Mother's disciple. And that particular scene, it has left an indelible impression in my mind. That how practice goes so deep that it has taken Dhrida Bhumi, he firm root inside the heart and the whole nervous system takes up meditation. In Bedurmat we have a two years of training for Brahmacharis. It's called training center. And during our training center we will finish our studies in Upanishads and other scriptures. And then at the end of the two years we will be initiated into the Brahmacharya vows. Then we will be given a new name. Chaitanya name will come and our old name will be changed to new name. Nirvikara Chaitanya, Sanatana Chaitanya, so many Chaitanyas will come. This takes place after five years. Three years joining, two years training in Bedurban. And at the end of the Brahmacharya, before we go back to our centers, we will meet President Maharaj, who is the Guru of the Gold Brahmacharya order. And he will spend few hours with us cutting jokes, telling something very sublime, giving advices, spiritual instructions and all those things. Virish Ranji was a great soul. And during his last days, he had some illness. If you read the book, The Divine Life, you will find what a great soul he was. Sometimes he used to take the diseases of the devotees, monks, and he used to suffer. So during the last years when he was suffering, many of the initiated devotees will bring complan, all legs, bone vita, this, that, so many things will be flooding. If he eats all those things, he will fall sick. But all the devotees have got their own uh, devotion, great bhakti for Guru, so they will be bringing. In the training center, all of us, we were quite young, 24, 25, and uh, food was uh, very little available in those days, very scarcely we used to get sufficient food to eat and we are so energetic and 4 to 5 hours of class and 3-4 hours of working, we used to feel terribly hungry and we also used to fall sick, almost like little malnutrition, though it's not malnutrition, energetic growing body, 23-24, say vibrant youths, so 6 to 7 hours of class, meditation, then their duties are there, gardening duty, shrine cleaning and then serving. So many of us used to feel so tired and we used to fall sick. So Vireshwaranji will send all these things to our training center. And at the end, when we are departing from Vilumat, from the important items the devotees have given to him, he will make a collection. Somebody would have given a watch, somebody would have given a pen, pen holder. So small, small things will be given to him and he will be carefully saving and preserving this so that when the brahmacharis will go back to their centers after finishing the training center he will give it to them so we had that meeting that brahmacharya was over last day we met him 7 o'clock we met him and a good amount of fun, humor, jokes everything will be going on and he gave us parting advices how to lead a monastic life don't keep contact with your father and mother they may try to contact and all those instructions he will be giving. And lastly he will announce, now there is a jackpot, lucky dip for all of you. So all these items you would have carefully kept there. 
and 30 to 31 brahmacharis will be there. All of us will be given a small bit of paper containing that number. And all the items will be kept there. Sometimes like this hanjini, sometimes pen, sometimes kerchief, I got asana. So all these things will be kept and each one will take the token paper. So all of us took our token paper and each one of us we got our gift. A small table stand of Sri Ramakrishna. So each one was taking their gift and we made pranams to him. We were standing at the entrance of his door and rejoicing, hey, I have got an asana, somebody told I have got Parker pen. And another man told I have got something else. One man told I have got a special book on Sri Ramakrishna written by somebody else. So these people all were doing such an exchange of views on the gifts they have got. At the time I was the manager. Suddenly I turned back. Maharaj was sitting in the center of the hall and the continuous talking, chit chatting, so much of joy. Brahmacharis are shouting, making fun with the Guru. And as soon as the lucky did the jackpot was over, all of the Brahmacharis got engaged with the gift they got. And because I was a manager, I had to drive the total flock to the training center. Before that, just like uh, I found Swami Vineshwar and he was so much engaged with us. Within few seconds, he pulled the chair, went into the corner of the room. You can see the President Maharaj got us even in Belo, but within few seconds, I found his hands became like this. And this portion, it went on like this. So clearly, I saw wow, what a person he is. And what an impression Guru has put on my mind. Within few seconds, naturally, the years of practice of Japa and meditation, without his knowledge, the whole body shrunk like a tortoise. Suddenly, I remembered the shloka from Gita. Kurmongani var. All the indriyas are getting packed inside. Eyes are so close and the mind is so indrawn. Totally lost to the external world. And Vireshwaran is chanting the Ishtam this throat, this portion of the throat is going on up and down. Absolutely lost. Didn't care for any of the Brahmacharis. Just five, six minutes before, he was totally engaged. But years of practice, with great devotion, unbroken practice, what happened? Meditation has entered into the nervous system. Because of the compulsion, he was engaged with us. Moment the Brahmacharya is moved, they didn't even come out of the house, his room fully. They were just on the entrance and talking, making noise. And when I turned, I found my God. This man is absorbed, already lost in the process of meditation. Then I told, Shh, Maharaj is meditating, come on, get out. So now you understand the meaning of Abhyasa, Nirantar, Dhirga Kala Nairantar, Satkara Sevito, Dhirga Bhumi. So when that practice becomes so deep, you need not have to meditate. Meditation will pull you like the strong current of the river. In the Brahma Kunda, you can see the Ganges flowing. You cannot step into the river without holding on to the chain. Even if you hold on to the chain, the current is so powerful that it can pull you. The current of meditation, if you practice, According to this condition, long time, unbroken and with great liking, meditation takes possession of you. One possessed not by host, but by meditation. So Krishna says, this is Abhyasa. How do you feel about Abhyasa? So it is not so easy, not that it is highly difficult or impossible, but the gravity we have to understand, simply sitting five minutes, oh, we are not get, get, getting meditation, the mind is not getting absorbed. So, Abhyasa is to be practiced like that. And as we go through the process, simply telling mind control, mind control has got no meaning. Mind control is only two words, M-I-N-D-C-O-N-D-R-O-L. What exactly is mind that you want to control? If I want to control my TBS, I have to look at the TBS, understand the system of operation, how it works, the knowledge must come, then I can control. So to control a TBS, I must focus my attention, get to learn about the operating system and then handle. 
We will come into that tomorrow evening. It's exactly like a snake charmer. How the moment you are free, he will run away. In the photo, it's clearly visible. Police are caught by the criminal. They can't move here and there. Though he's handcuffed. So in our case also, instead of we controlling the mind, the mind is controlling us because we don't have knowledge of the mind. Mind means hundreds of thoughts in flow. Like huge quantities of water flowing in the river, thoughts are continuously flowing in the mind. Forest, the word forest is a delusion. Similarly, the word mind is a delusion. Population is a delusion. Human beings are real. To control population, you have to control human beings. Simply in the mind you use the word population, population, nothing will happen. Kill the human beings, population will collapse. Cut the trees, the forest will disappear. Reduce the thoughts, the mind will come under control. But to reduce the thoughts, like the snake chama, he does two things. First, he plucks out the poisonous teeth. Then he keeps green leaves, the herbal leaves. So these two things, plucking the poisonous teeth, is called Vairagya. That to which our mind is attached, constantly running towards that particular object, which is causing the dist uh, distraction during the time of meditation, pluck out that poisonous teeth. And then keep the herbal leaf. This is called Abhyasa. Abhyasa is a herbal leaf. In case, even after plucking the snake bites, the herbal leaves, green leaves will act as a Medicine. Because of our constant habit of meditation, even if some distraction comes, the tremendous attraction will pull us back into the stream of meditation. And Vairagya is plucking the poisonous teeth of the snake. Tomorrow we will take up the discussion. So in plucking out the poisonous teeth and having the green leaf, one has to watch the flow of thoughts in the mind. Then understanding the Observation about the thoughts will give us knowledge about thoughts. When thoughts are controlled, mind gets controlled. Om Shanti 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 Ni Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ram Krishna Paramastu. In the office room, we have kept few series meditation on Ram Krishna. If anybody is interested after Arati, you can purchase it. We will take up the second part of this uh, mind control dhyana tomorrow evening. Jai Ramakrishna.